good evening. God bless you. I am your host, the founder of 360 Degree Ministries, where the love of Christ must come full circle. Some of you know who I am. Some of you have heard this voice before, but that's not all that relevant right now, the who I am. It's what I have to say that's going to be pretty relevant. Uh, before we get to that part, just wanted to let you know this is the new format of the Friday Features. We're going to test audio, and I welcome feedback on it. Uh, this is ultimately so that I can convey the things of God to you in the most effective manner possible so that all of you can be at the best that you need to be in all the stuff that you have to take care of. So with that, let me ask a question. How's your perspective? That's a very awkward question to ask, isn't it? Well, the alternative question to ask would be, how are you feeling? But those of us in the kingdom who deal with spiritual battle understand that oftentimes how we feel does not matter. We also understand that how God feels is superseded by his will and that God hates our sin, but he preserves us because he understands that his will and his glory supersede feelings. It's us that have to learn that lesson. So with that said, this unit's going to be about perspective, particularly eternal perspective. But in talking about eternal perspective, I want to talk about the most fundamental element of eternal perspective, and that's the not worrying part of eternal perspective. Those of you who know me know that that's not necessarily something I consider myself to be the most sagely at, but God equips the called he doesn't call the equip and with that said i'm going to go ahead and read the passage for today and then we'll start to talk about it i'm going to be reading uh, matthew uh, chapter 6 verses 9 through 13 we will be reading out of the uh, new american standard bible and here we go pray then in this way our father who is in heaven hallowed be your name your kingdom come your will be done on earth as it is in heaven Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we also have forgiven our debtors. And do not lead us into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. So, those of you who have been keeping up with this for a long time know that I normally just synthesize somewhat exotic pieces of scripture from different parts of the Bible and put them together for a given session in a unit. Well, that's not what we're going to do today. Not to that extent, at least. I want to dial it back a little bit, and we're going to focus on this passage, maybe a couple others. But within this, what I want to talk about is daily bread. And a wise man once told me, that at some point, that mentality has to kick in. I mean, we all live in America, right? America's still more or less the best place in the world to live, but it's under all-time financial pressure, isn't it? A lot of you in middle America are under all-time financial pressure, making financial adjustments on different things. Some of you may have some anxieties about some bills or some other things that are going on in your lives. Well... Give me my day, my daily bread, is actually a pretty good bridge to kill that. And we're going to talk about it just for a minute. So, when we talk about give us this day, our daily bread, remember, this is a prayer that the context of the prayer should be recited on a daily basis. I mean, more importantly than that, we should be completely in fellowship with God. We owe God 168 hours a week of our fellowship and need to be repentant for any gaps in that. But when we talk about daily bread, I mean, what does that mean, really? When we talk about give us this day our daily bread, give me my day my daily bread. When you break it down, 
it's kind of paradoxical, actually, because when we talk about living day to day, we're not necessarily talking about living day to day. But God doesn't want you not to plan. He just wants to be at the beginning of your plan. In every aspect of it, a wise woman once told me a very simple prayer. I know those of you know me from my many words. Well, I also do believe, believe it or not, that sometimes you can get your point done in a few words. So she told me, Lord, make your will my will. That's a very simple prayer, isn't it? Well, in that, when we make God's will our will, he comes through. He did tell us that he would never leave us, and he would never leave us or forsake us. Didn't he? That's awesome, isn't it? But what happens to us when we get in our issues, when we get in our pain, when we get in our anxieties about all these things? We dis Deuteronomy 31.6. I understanding that God will never leave us or forsake us. And we try to call audibles on God's business. We try to superimpose our agenda on what he has to say because God's not going to show up. God's not going to do this. God's not going to do that. God's not going to be able to do this for me. And it doesn't matter whether or not God has delivered us from a whole bunch of things already. <laughs> if our perspective isn't on point like it needs to be, the very next thing we're going to do is we're going to try to do it our way because God totally couldn't take care of this. God totally couldn't do this for me. God, God's not going to do that. But why do we do that? I mean, that's just crazy, isn't it? But it's not really that crazy because, you know, we inherited the sin from Adam and Eve we inherit generational sin from our environment and our families. And then we do a pretty good job of coming up with our own sin, unique to us. That's a lot of sin to overcome, isn't it? But when we talk about trying to superimpose our agenda on God's agenda and make God fit into what we want to do, why do we do that? Well, it's usually because we want something. And... Psalms 23 distinctly tells us we shall not want, but we wind up wanting anyway. We want frivolous things sometimes, like the new Xbox or Susie over there in the corner to like us. Sometimes we want things that kind of seem practical to want, like our electric bill paid, or the car note paid, or the rent paid. Or the hospital bill paid. But whether it's a frivolous thing, so to speak, or a practical thing, we have to understand to put God first. We have to understand that God has to be put first in all of that and not superimpose our agendas on that. The other real couple passages I want to read are actually from... Uh, James chapter 4. James chapter 4 takes this even deeper. And I'm kind of pulling from some material from my uh, mentors and colleagues over at Jesus Alpha and Omega Ministries. So uh, thank you to Jesus Alpha and Omega Ministries for all that you do for so many, including myself. But James chapter 4, we talk about what is the source of quarrels and conflicts among you. It's not the source of your pleasures that wage war in your members, you lust and do not have, so you commit murder. You are envious and cannot obtain, so you fight and quarrel. You do not have because you do not ask. You ask and do not receive because you ask with wrong motives so that you may spend it on your pleasures, your adulteresses. Do you not know that friendship with the world is hostility toward God? Hostility toward God. Do you, do you understand that? Anything that we want more than God is hostility. Other translations say enmity. And 
springing back to Matthew chapter 6, verse 24 tells us we can't serve God and wealth. Well, you could put God and, you know, back in uh, Exodus chapter 20, one of the commandments is don't have any other gods before me. God's a jealous God and the supreme being with all power, all knowledge, sovereignty, the embodiment of love, etc., etc., etc. Why would he need help? If you're in the spot that you're in, God puts you in. It. God allowed that spot or led you to that spot for a reason. There's a growth moment to happen in that. And the growth moment is more. The growth moment is actually more important than the bill being paid. That one stung a little bit, didn't it? Some of you probably a little bit upset. But when you think about it, that empowerment that God gives you to get through that peace, you've got to take care of it. Remember, never leave or forsake you. So when you do it his way, when you focus on him as opposed to the thing, the circumstance. I mean, isn't circumstance just a drop in the bucket to a sovereign God? But he wants our perspective. He wants us to love him with everything that we have. You know, it goes back to Deuteronomy 6, 4 and Matthew chapter 22, verses 35 through 40, which parallels with James 4, doesn't it? If you have lust for anything, and I'm not just talking about sexual immorality, I'm talking about anything. How can you love your neighbor, your family, let alone the person on the street, let alone, let alone the person you have issues with. You're going to fight. You're going to fuss because every sin comes of some place of insecurity or rather uh, errant perspective. Get the eternal perspective. Understand that God has eternity covered. We can live from a quote unquote day to day basis. But still plan. I mean, you want to get a house someday, still do that. You want to form a family someday, still do that. Just put God at the forefront of it. Let God's power and insight flow through you in all that you do and just do it his way. That's all I'm really saying about that. And that just brings me to the end of what I want to talk about. I mean, in Matthew 6, chapter 33, Seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. God knows what you got going on. God has known what you are going through now, has known about what you are going through now since before the foundation of the world. He also knows exactly how he's going to deliver you from it. It's going to be the best thing for you. The absolute best thing for you. So, if you have the food to eat now, and you have the roof over your head, you ahead of the curve. If you got entertainment and people who love you, you even further ahead of the curve. Give God his blessing. Give God his, his praise. Bless the Lord at all times. Pay the blessings forward. Be a blessing. Be a servant. Greatest among you, right? Well, how can you do that unless your perspective is on point? And just to nail the point home, how many of us worry about tomorrow? I do it more often than you know, do it more often than you know, but praise the Father in heaven for being a long suffering God who has laid out all these wonderful things for us and allows us to do great things in his holy name. But to just wrap it up for this particular unit session, uh, don't worry about tomorrow. That's not saying don't think about tomorrow. Just don't worry about tomorrow. Right now is enough. Focus on doing what God said to do for now. Even if that's to sit completely still and wait on it. Because he'll, he'll run that on, on you a lot. It's not easy. But, you know, if spiritual maturity were easy, everybody would have it. 
basic nuts and bolts. We'll be talking about perspective in the next coming weeks. Uh, again, leave your feedback in the comments. This is a pilot run, if you will. But we'll do it again next week, especially if you like it. Uh, sorry it ran over a little bit. Well, I'm actually not really that sorry. But anyway, uh, I thank you for your time. Thank you for listening. Again, we'll talk about perspective some more uh, next week. And I want each and every one of you to have a great weekend. I love each and every one of you. And there's nothing you can do about it. God bless and take care.